Good morning guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be installing the Zebra light bar kit on our 2010 JK Unlimited. Just before we get started, full disclosure, they did reach out to me on Facebook um, and say, hey we like your videos, can we send you this light bar so you can do a review about it, see how you like it um, and see how it's so different than the other light bars on the market. Um, they are down in Victoria um, and all the parts are made in Australia. So I said yep, send it through, I'll love to review on it um, and see how we go. Normally I don't really like um, big light bars that sit above the windscreen. I feel like they're too big, they're like a bit over the top and a bit... Yeah, I don't really like them. Um, but he sent me a few photos of the light bar kit um, and I was really surprised on how slim it fit to the um, windscreen. It actually moulds to the top of the windshield of the Jeep um, and instead of one massive light bar which is a bit over the top, it's through smaller light bars and housed in this plastic casing. Which I thought it was pretty cool, so I said hey, um, send it down to me, um, I'd love to review on it, install it, um, and see we, how we go. So we've got the box of it here, um, shipping is pretty fast, um, I will leave a link to their uh, website down in the description if you guys want to check them out as well. It's also pricing for the full light bar kit, everything included, which is brackets and um, the enclosing mount, which is plastic, um, and the three light bars, wiring harness and stuff. So I think it's about $350, I will leave this down in the description if you guys do want to check them out. Um, we'll be giving an honest review on how we like it, how easy it is to install, how long it does take. Now, full disclosure as well, I am pretty useless at wiring. I don't normally like to tackle it. I'm not scared, but I'm not confident doing it. So if I can install it, you guys can install it as well. Um, I did open up the kit earlier in the week um, when it first got out, sent out to me, um, and I had a look through the wiring harness. And just pretty much plug and play, hook it up to the lights, hook it up to the battery, um, and then it's like a little switch you run through the firewall into the um, cabin of the Jeep, so it's got a little switch, you don't really have to, there's no splicing, there's no tucking or anything like that, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I don't like tackling the wiring myself, but if you, if I can install it with no problem, you guys can install it as well. So let's chuck you guys on the tripod, let's unbox this thing, let's see all the parts, um, let's see the quality of the parts as well in the box, then we can go and install it on the Jeep as well. Alright, so, now, Obviously I did unpack this a little bit earlier in the week, but nice thick bubble wrap in there. So that's the main housing that will go above the windscreen. As you can see, it's got the three slots for the different size light bars. You've got two smaller ones um, at the end, and then a bigger one in the centre. I'm not 100% sure on the size. So that is plastic. They've got their, which is nice because it's nice and lightweight. They've got their um, logo on the top, which is actually pretty good. I like how it's indented rather than like a sticker. Um, and then on the back you got foam padding as well, which is really good. I was a bit concerned that having something like this might sit against the paint and scratch it. So I'm pretty, it's pretty cool that they've actually put some padding on there to be able to protect it um, against rubbing from the paint. Um, on the sides you can actually see where the brackets to the side will mount in, front and back. The other thing I like about these as well, instead of having a big bugger off light bar, which is just one continuous light, how it's got the three individual lights, means if you've got a different coloured Jeep, um, obviously we've got a white Jeep and this stuff is all black. Later on, after I install this, I might actually take it off again and paint these white to actually match them with the Jeep. That way it will look really nice and clean. If you've got a green Jeep or an orange Jeep or whatever, that might be something that you guys want to look into doing. Um, that way it's going to match them a lot nicer rather than having that one continuous light bar, which a lot of Jeeps out there have, they've got that one 50 inch light bar, which I think it looks out of place, I think, I think it looks untidy. So if you can get these, um, you do have to go with this kit, you can actually colour match this in with your Jeep, which would look pretty damn cool I reckon. So that's the main housing of the light. And in the box, you've got zebra instructions, so in the kit itself, which encloses two times A pillar mounting brackets, uh, left and the right. Industries light bar housing, UV protector, which is that, the 3mm 9.4 feet wiring harness, which is that. As I said, um, that's going to be really easy to plug in. You can see the little switch, plug into the battery, uh, plug into the lights, away you go. So it looks all good, nice packaging as well. Um, two times 7 inch light bars, so these end ones here um, are 7 inch and 1 times 20 inch light bar. So that's a pretty decent size um, light bars in there. Um, then you also got six times 90 degree angle stainless steel mounted brackets. Um, it's got a few different pictures. I like how they include pictures on there for people that, I don't know, I, I'm more of a virtual learner, so that really applies to me. That's all well set up. 
Um, then on the back, um, you've got a few instructions about installing the light bar. I do recommend using duct tape um, on the back of the housing here with the rind to keep it nice and tucked in there so it's not flopping about. So that's pretty cool. Put those in a safe place in case we get lost. As I said, wiring harness as well, which will be good. Um, and then you've got the side brackets as well. Now these are steel. Wow. That's really good. So that's steel. Um, you've got the what five points for, um, for your A pillar um, to bolt into. And as I look at that, I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, so that's actually got a little bit of a bend in it, which will probably match up to the windscreen on the Jeep. I've seen a lot of um, brackets up there where they're actually quite straight. Also on the back as well, you've got some more rubber, which will sit against the paint, which is really cool. Wow. So again, I might end up painting that white, which will look pretty cool, I reckon. And then you've got... So you've got two times those brackets, which is pretty cool. I like how it's pretty much one piece. You've got a few welds on the back, so that's where those bends would have been, which is good. I like how it's nice and flat on the back side. Yeah. Um, what else we got? We've got your washers, bolts. I'm sure those are for the light bars. So pretty much comes with everything you need. Oh. And then inside, um, and the wiring hub. That's a nice slim light bar, I like that. So that'll be the centre one that's mounted in there. Then we've got the... Ones. All of these come with... I like the little yellow light in the back, I think that's pretty cool. Nice and slim, I like that. I don't like big, bulky stuff, if that makes sense. wine box. Nice. That's going to be pretty cool. Alright, so the thing, the first thing we're going to do is install the A-pillar brackets. What does it say on the instructions? So it says for installation, mount the 20 inch and 7 inch light bars into the light bar housing. Note for the best fitment, use the supplied 90 inch stainless steel bracket rather than the brackets included in the light bar box. So that's why they supply other ones. Obviously that's going to be a better fit. Um, also note the direction of the bracket left and right hand side, so they actually mounted as well. Um, to install the two A pillar onto the vehicle using the factory hardware, note do not tighten down the hardware if planned to run the wiring harness behind the bracket. I probably will run them behind the bracket, um, I'll install it first, um, as he said leave it loose, uh, see how we go. Um, you can run it externally if you want, um, I think a lot of people, um, I think it's said on here, um, not run it through the hard top. I think a lot of people might have run them through the freedom panels which might break the seal in the panel and the roof might leak. So that might be an idea where you look at running it behind the actual A pillar bracket itself. So let's go ahead and mount these inside the um, housing itself, these lights, um, and then we can get onto the A pillar brackets as well. Alright, so for insulation I've already installed the two outer lights, the two 7 inch lights, um, as per instructions I've just left them loose on the back, I can go along later, tighten them up, um, just keep it nice and loose for now. Um, also figure out where you want to run your wiring, so make sure it's facing the same way so you can easily tuck it up the back, so that's something to think about when you are installing it. I probably have mine running down the side of the Jeep, so I've kind of faced everything to one side. So I've just installed those uh, side ones, as I said, I've left them loose uh, for installation. Uh, so let's now do the centre one. As you can see, the bracket, as I said in the instructions, don't use these brackets. Obviously these brackets are a lot bigger, so they've supplied um, different brackets. You can see the size difference there. Uh, so just put those on the side, you can use for something else. Those are actually quite nice brackets. So are these, um, and you've got all your Allen keys and everything supplied as well. So let's go ahead and install that centre light bar um, and then we can see how everything sits and then we can start tightening everything down. 
start putting those A pillar brackets. So as I said, I'm going to run my wiring the same way, going across. Get my two brackets. Get the two smaller Allen key screws they actually provided in the packet with the light bar. Everything's the same thread, so it's all good. As I said, I'm just doing everything pretty much finger tight at the moment, so everything's nice and loose. Bracket. At any time, comment below what you guys are running on your Jeeps, what light bars you're running. If you're interested in buying this product, I uh, will leave a link down in the description. But let me know what you guys are running on your Jeeps at the moment. If you are running any light bars or not at all, a lot of people don't really like them. Um, maybe this one can change your mind. So we'll line those up. And you get your two, what I two bolts supplied there, and then in those yellow packs again. These ones, you just grab the nuts out of there, which are supplied, which is cool. You just feed it through the back. Nice and finger tight, so let's start going and install these a pillar bars. Alright, so to remove the, uh, what do we got, two, four, five, six bolts on the a pillar here, all you'll need is a T40 Torx bit. Obviously these don't come in the pack included, so you need to buy your own ones. You can pick these up from Super Cheap Auto in a pack, which are pretty cheap. So you just need to remove these. I need to remove my UHF antenna at the same time. Uh, which kind of sucks, but they will just go back in place. All right, so we've taken the five that we need to take off. Um, the bottom one stays in there, which I thought was a great idea because there's actually a plate behind here. Uh, you can actually see it shifting when you're taking these off. Um, so that sh plate can shift down. I've heard people having heaps of problems, so it's good that last bolt actually stays in there. So we're just mounting this up here. As I said, it's got rubber padding on the back. Uh, what I might do is just give that a quick wipe down with some um, lazy wax uh, just to protect that surface. Don't know how long it's going to be on for just because it's going to be dirty. There's going to be water dripping down there so I might just give that a quick wipe down before we get started. Just starting to clean the surface. I'm just using lazy wax. You can use anything you want. So that's going to sit about there. I like how that's curved. As I said before, that's actually curved. That's so actually matching how the windscreen kind of folds in and curves around which I really like. So, I should have done this before I started building this on, is actually run the wiring harness because my battery on the Jeep is here, um, on the passenger side, drivers if you're in America, or is it, the, or is your battery in America on the other side? Whichever it might be, I need to take this off again, it's just screwed on, and then we can run the wiring harness with the clips for the light bars through here, so it's all nice and tucked away, that way we can take this panel off here, run them down to the battery, really easy and, and simple. So, put that over there at the time. And that. And we'll just. Alright. So, as it said in the instructions, if you are running the rowing, rowing harness behind the A pillar, leave it loose so you, you can give these a bit more give, pull it nice and tight. So, we'll put one in so it kind of holds there. And we kind of want that. We can. Probably better doing it now rather than trying to figure it out later. Yeah. 
All right, so what I did was change the wiring a little bit. I was running all three wires down the A pillar on the passenger side and it was bulging out a little bit. So the nuts in the actual here um, weren't threading in properly just because on the outside they're bulging out. So what I did around the wire for this one down here, going through underneath here, as you can see in there it's all tucked. I might have a guy that there. It's just a little bit neater, doesn't flop around anything like that. Uh, so yeah, run it from that light down the A pillar. That way it doesn't bulge out too far and you don't have troubles of trying to lose those bolts if bolts up. Um, as I said, all the wiring is plug and play, so it's super simple um, and straightforward. So as I said, two wires down the right hand side, uh, left hand side, the driver side if you're in America, right hand side. Driver side if you're in America, passenger side if you're in Australia and other countries. Plug and play, it's super straightforward. I'm not good at wiring as I said, uh, but if I can do it, you guys can do it as well. So with the switch, all I did was remove the uh, rear wiper um, thing, uh, the water reservoir, and kind of push it through that gap down the bottom there. It's it is a little bit tight. Um, I did cut the hole a little bit bigger just so it can fit through a little bit easier because it is that plug. And um, then all I did was run it underneath the dashboard. Underneath the dashboard and it's sitting just here. So I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to route it. Where it's either going to sit in here, so we need to drill a hole in the plastic to run that, but that switch is hooked up. Everything is firing fine. So you don't need to take the glove box out, but I did. You can just reach up and just thread it through. Um, and it's just running underneath the dash until there. It's just a preference of kind of where you guys want it to be. So where you guys want it to be and how you want it sitting, where you want it. You might have like a gauge cluster um, with other switches and stuff in it. I do, but um, that's for my locker, uh, sway bar, disconnect and that stuff. So if you guys got a switch, you can disconnect the switch. It's already there and just plug in something else, which is really handy. So we've already got it all hooked up. It sits nice and flush. One thing I really like, if you look at it, you can see it actually curves down the windscreen, um, which nice tight fitment, so we probably won't get any wind noise whatsoever. Looks nice and flush. So it's very close to the soft top, uh, which I like and kind of just like at the same time. Um, it might be a bit of a pain in the ass to get the soft top off, uh, uh, hard top off, those threaded panels off. I did talk to the company and they said that all you've got to do is kind of tilt it backwards, slide it back first, um, and then you can lift it out. So it's still really simple to take those off. Um, but I really like how slimline it is as it folds, flows and folds to the contours of the Jeep. I mean, it's a pretty flat windscreen, but it's nice that it actually contours to it. So it looks factory almost. Um, it doesn't look out of place with those like big 50 inch pipe bars and stuff like that. So it's actually got this particular film on it at the moment. Uh, so all we need to do is pull that off and pretty much good to go. Um, there isn't really anything, anything else we need to take off um, or tidy up. It's all looking pretty good, really happy with it so far. Um, but let's get it out of the garage, let's get it on the street and have a look. I'll um, also be doing a morning run as well just so I can see how bright they are. Just in the garage it's daytime now you can see how bright they are. So let's take that film off, let's get outside and see how bright they are. Alright, so it's just before 5, well just after 5am and so this is the perfect time to test out how bright the new light bar we've just installed uh, by Siva Products, or Siva, the new light bar we've just installed by Siva Industries on top of the windshield and let's see how bright they are. So they are three individual light bars, as you can see there's not a lot of light um, at the moment and if we flick the switch So, off, on. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up. Damn, it is bright. So you got the three individual light bars, you got the two smaller ones, um, and you got the bigger one in the middle, and it creates a beautiful flood. So, turn it off again. So that's just with my headlights on, no high beams or anything. Off, on. Damn. So imagine this out in the middle of the bush, pitch black darkness, obviously we've got a few street lights and stuff like that on. Um, just coming up to 
sunrise now, so there's a bit of ambient light about, um, but you can definitely see how bright they are. Nice flood, all directions, instead of like pointed at one direction, which like a, a 50 inch light bar would probably do. Um, this is pointing in straight down the middle, then both on the sides with the two smaller ones as well, which creates a massive amount of light. And for wind noise, a lot of people would be asking, it's going to be noisy, you put a 50 inch light there on, it's been so noisy, you get that shepherd whistle. Now with this, because it sits so tightly to the Jeep, um, and they do recommend using a bit of a, a, bit of a silicon strip um, on the leading edge down the bottom um, to attach the windshield to minimise um, wind noise and drag. Um, what I've done is put a little bit of 3M tape, as you'll see in a, in a bit. Um, to just hold it down a little bit. Without that tape, you do produce a little bit of wind noise, so do keep that in mind. Um, but with the 3M tape, I'm doing 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, um, and as you can hear, nothing. A little bit of wind noise, but I've always had that. That's from through the hard top. Um, no fluttering, no noisy, no annoying whistles, like a lot of people say that they get with the. Um, 50 inch light bars and stuff like that. A lot of people run covers on 50 inch light bars, you don't need any of that sort of thing. Um, still holding about 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles, and no wind noise, perfectly quiet. Um, on big windy days, you might hear a little bit of, little bit of wind just hitting it. Um, other than that, no whistle, no fluttering, nothing like that. So wind noise on point, nothing at all. So let's head to the outside of the car and um, check it out. Alright, as you guys saw this morning, it's super bright with the three lights up the top. It creates massive amounts of light. You saw how dark it was, a little bit of street light, a little bit of ambient light coming because it's, the sun was coming up. But that light bar here, um, the two at the sides, how they kind of face out to the sides and that one kind of flooding the center, created so much light. It's awesome. So my final thoughts on it, anything I'd change, not really. There's a couple of things that I um, I tried to remove the freedom panels from the Jeep. Now, uh, before it got sent out, I asked if it would infect. Now, before it got sent out, I asked if it would uh, protrude onto the freedom panels and if there would be any issues with removing them. He said no, but he didn't have any roof racks on his Jeep. Um, so I've got the roof racks on my Jeep. And you can see how they come just past the back of the freedom panel. Now, with his one, he kind of just lifts the freedom panel uh, backwards and lifts it straight up. He showed me a video. And without roof racks, it works perfectly. Um, but obviously with the roof racks, I can't obviously lift it back and lift it straight up. So if you do have roof racks um, or a, a, plant, a platform, like a rhino rack platform that actually protrudes past the uh, freedom panels, you'll have a little bit of issue with removing the freedom panels from the Jeep. Because obviously the light bar bracket here sits almost flush with the actual hardtop, which is mint um because it's not sitting too high it's not creating heaps of wind noise and stuff like that as you guys heard earlier um but it will make it a little bit harder if you do have roof racks or a platform to get the freedom panels off um i love how it does sit flush with the freedom panels uh it looks awesome doesn't look too bulky or big um, but just keep that in mind when you are ordering it i've let the guy know um and so he will be looking into a solution to either fix that um, and play in with roof racks just to make life a little bit easier um, but just keep that in mind um, you, will, you will have a little bit of trouble trying to remove it. It's not impossible by any means, it's just not as easy. Um, but in saying that, it looks absolutely mint. Love how sleek and I love how sleek it is, um, how it just rolls and curves to the actual windscreen itself. Now, the other thing I have noticed is on the motorway, it kind of lifts up a little bit um, from the windscreen. It's not too big a deal. Um, if it lifts up too much, it will create a little bit of wind noise. Um, now, on the instructions they've supplied, it does say use a little bit of silicon here um, just to hold it down to reduce any wind noise. Now, it's a bit hesitant about running silicon. Um, he's not running any silicon on his one and he doesn't have any wind noise. Um, so, what I've done is just use um, some Grilla tape. Uh, what I will do is actually go along the entire thing and remove the foam padding maybe in different sections um, and just add Grilla tape so it actually holds it firmly down. You can see the sections I've actually got Grilla tape through there um, and it's not lifting up as much as it was without it. So do keep that in mind, it has specified in the instructions that um, using silicon to hold this down is recommended, it's not 
mandatory you don't have to by any means uh, but it's good that he's put that in there um, just in case um, these fit the side panels fit really well no issues with that another thing um, I might like to see from him is that these nuts at the top that actually hold it in the um, light the nuts uh, and bolts the nuts aren't nylock uh, so over time maybe with forward driving they might come loose uh, so maybe you can look into doing some nylock nuts instead of just normal nuts that may come loose over time I don't know if they will um, but because they are facing down with gravity and forward driving and stuff like that they may come loose over time they may not um, but it's a nice little safety thing in there if um, they can do that wiring as I said I'm absolutely horrible at wiring um, but because this is a full plug and play system um, all you have to do is run the rise run it to the battery then run the switch through the car underneath the dash uh, to your little switch here mount that up and you're good to go I mean it was easy enough for me to if it's easy enough for me to do it's easy enough for you guys to do as well installation as you guys saw was very easy very straightforward um, his instructions were very good um, there's not much else like it's a really good system I love how flat it looks to the windscreen it's not raised up like the other 52 inch light bars which create a lot of wind noise and kind of look out of place I think the bigger ones the 52 inch ones look too big they look too bulky and I think they look too overdone where this contours to the actual body of the Jeep um, the windshield and stuff like that it looks almost factory but like aftermarket and aggressive at the same time if that makes sense um, in the future I might actually take this all off um, and colour match it to the Jeep um, and still have the black nuts there um, and the light showing at the moment with the draft theme we're going to do it might actually look really good um, with the black going up um, and the black sides we'll be adding this weekend but I'm really happy with it so far um, if you guys we do have a discount code for you guys if you guys want to check that out I'll leave a little link down below for 20% off all you need to do is use the code Aussie um, I'll leave all the details below if you guys want to check that out as well but really happy with this product um, can't really fold it at all it's awesome very bright um, looks awesome can't really go wrong so if you guys are in an up, uh, are looking for an upgrade for your Jeep for a light bar I'd definitely recommend this I think it's a lot nicer than a lot of other uh, light bars out on the market it looks nice and sleek clean produces a lot of light what more do you need so that's pretty much it for today um, I hope you guys like this video I hope you guys like this product if you do smash that like button if you haven't already smash the subscribe button as well thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you guys next time